one special edition Wimbledon episode starts now and actually it is spitting a little bit play is suspended Tennis United Wimbledon week. We have special guests, Tim Henman and Lindsay Davenport joining us. I don't know if you can describe exactly how big a deal it is to a player to be able to say they played at Wimbledon. The first time I went there, I of course lost in the qualies, which isn't played on the main site. And I remember I, I was pretty young, like 15 or 16, but I remember crying. And then the next year I got in the main draw. I'll never forget this. I was at six, two, five, one. And I couldn't believe I was about to win a match. I ended up winning 10, eight in the third. That you can't put into words like why it makes you feel like that. You just hear about it growing up and the legend and then you go there and there's no site anywhere in the world like it. And you slightly glossed over the fact that you won the tournament. <laughs> yeah. You know, just slightly. You, you know I got lucky, so, I, you know. Like, oh no, tell, tell us a little bit about winning Wimbledon. If you were that nervous for your first round, tell us a little bit about the match, the finals. You know, when I look back, everything kind of fell into place and, and Tim would remember maybe in 99, it rained so much. I played my round of 16 on Monday. I played my quarterfinals really late on Friday. I mean, it rained for, it just seemed endless days and it was always a rush to try and finish it. It was craziness. And I think that helped me because it just seemed like everything was just going, going, going. I remember winning and I've seen highlights a couple of times that I look absolutely shocked. Like I didn't smile because I couldn't <laughs> believe what had just happened. I wish I could go back and like enjoy it more, but it was just like, Obviously, uh, you know, amazing when I look back. It's a long time though, 21 years ago. It's, time goes so fast. And Tim, you've had, you've had a, a ton of, you know, amazing experiences at Wimbledon. I remember watching, watching you on TV in the Henman Hill going crazy. It, it's pretty cool, pretty cool to, to have, you know, kind of your mark on, on such a historic grounds as, as Wimbledon. I, I reflect back the first time I went to, to Wimbledon when, when I was six, that was sort of when I made my one and only career decision that I wanted to play tennis. And then, um, 15, awesome. 15, yeah, 15 years later, I, I was playing uh, first round in 96. There was some sort of debate about changing its name, but I've, I've quashed that. <laughs> you got to make sure that that never gets taken down. That is Henman Hill. You know, you're, you're always so close to, to kind of taking it all the way. And, and if you can pick one, you know, highlight or one best moment, what would you say it is? 1997, um, I was playing Paul Harhus um, in the third round. And, and uh, when we came on court, um, you know, the center court was absolutely packed. And every shot I hit in the, in the warm up, you know, the crowd cheered and every shot, he, <laughs> the crowd booed. And, and it was awesome. <laughs> in terms of the atmosphere, that was the best atmosphere I ever played in. You know, playing, honestly, playing in that whole era where Tim was playing at Wimbledon was crazy. And, and like everything for those couple of weeks when Tim was in, it was all about Tim. I, I honestly don't know how we survived it. I mean, you pick up a paper and it's, everything was about Tim and, and every match he played. I do remember those years. I suffered through a few of Tim's losses there too. I wanted him to win. In 1995, I got disqualified from Wimbledon. I, was, I accidentally hit a pool girl in doubles. I was the first person First person in 125 years to be disqualified. <laughs> no way. Actually, I didn't know that. He missed a volley, right? And he went to hit the ball back into the net and the girl had sprinted across the net to get it. So anyway, I get disqualified. The next day, uh, I'm sharing a flat with a guy called Andrew Richardson, who was 
um, a player, fellow British player. And he went out and bought all the newspapers, which was really <laughs> helpful. And I remember seeing the, I remember seeing the back page of The Sun, which is obviously a tabloid newspaper. <clears throat> and the headline, it said, he hit it so hard it could have killed her. <laughs> which, was, which was a slight, slight. Oh my God. But anyway, no way. So fast forward to 2002. I come in on the first Thursday, so ready for my second round match. And I'm in the locker room and there's a few players and they're looking, they're reading a newspaper and they keep looking around at me. And so I'm <laughs> thinking, this is weird. And they said, oh, you've got to see this. <laughs> so it was, front, it was front page of the Daily Mirror. So I won one match. And the front page of the mirror, which is another tabloid, it said across the whole page, it said, Tim, dot, dot, dot. If you choke this year, we'll never forgive you. <laughs> no way. way. No way. Oh my God. <laughs> no way. I got to the semis and lost to Hewitt. So I choked. This is like my funny story from 1999. So. I had no idea Steph and Andre had started dating in Paris or somewhere around that time. Um, so on the final day, I, I played Steph and Andre and Pete were playing right after us. Pete and Andre were waiting right there to walk out for the men's singles final. And we would come off and Bud Collins from NBC would interview us right before you get off the court. So I'm waiting probably like 10 feet behind. Steph goes first, um, does her interview. And then I come up to speak to Bud. And right then, Steph kind of walks by and um, Andre pinches her on the butt as she walks by. And I was thinking, <laughs> oh my God, that's so weird. Like, and, and right then, but I remember getting out of like that walking area, walking inside and going, that was so strange. Like, I, <laughs> I had no idea what was kind of happening, but I will never forget that moment. It was pretty funny. More from Tim and Lindsay later in the show. And that, like, I couldn't breathe for like two minutes. It's like, oh my God, I, I did it after, you know, two years where I lost in the final and back, and this time I managed to win. And then it was an incredible feeling. I had to, I had to take a few moments to, to, be, to believe it and to see my team and to talk about it and to make it real because at that time, on the court with all the people, you are like dreaming a little bit afterwards, like a few hours, to really be conscious about what I just did. Mats Vilander, Stefan Edberg, how are you guys doing today? We're going to do a little Wimbledon-themed interview today. Are you guys uh, up for this? Yes, we are. Yes, I'm up for the challenge. Okay, guys, what was your earliest Wimbledon memory, like either spectating or playing? I can still remember the time when I first got to Wimbledon, the first time back in 1983. When you walk on top of that hill, uh, on, on top of Wimbledon, you actually see Wimbledon, you know, just the sight, seeing Wimbledon in front of you, something that you really dreamt about coming one day. My first memory uh, uh, of Wimbledon is actually not at Wimbledon, it's actually at Roehampton. I was had a chance to sit in the restaurant and look at all these guys being presented to me by the other Swedes. There were two, three, oh, look, that guy, he's 162 <laughs> in the world. And that guy is 220, <laughs> he's from Austria. So I had this, oh my God, this is unbelievable. So Wimbledon was so far in, in the distance. And then that same year I played the juniors. So for me, it was something I can never get to Wimbledon. And then I was invited to play my first match at Wimbledon uh, as a seeded player. Yeah, I won the French Open and they put me on center court first round. I'm like, why would you do that? I haven't come to the net in like six weeks. <laughs> Why do you have to give me this added pressure right now? <laughs> and he was ranked in the top 30, not seated. And I won in three sets and I served and volleyed on both serves. I was like, I have to do it because they're going to laugh at me. So that was my proudest <laughs> for the moment to prove to myself I can play this kind of tennis. Stefan, that's how you've always played, though. I mean, from when you were young, would you say your volleys, that was that was your game? It sort of came around in 15 years of age. I had a coach who actually, you know, had me do a lot of these drills, uh, which I enjoyed. And um, obviously, at 15, I trained from a two-handed backhand to a one-handed backhand. First year, playing on a one-handed backhand, every ball would come to my back, and I would get so frustrated, and eventually I would... <laughs> Would sort of miss and I would lose the point. And then I came to this fantastic idea. If I play so 
volley on both my first and second serve, they're not going to get to my backhand. And they didn't. <laughs> That's amazing. That's brilliant. <laughs> so simple, but so effective. <laughs> this one might be a little tougher to talk about, but your toughest Wimbledon loss. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, Stefan, you... Feel free to go, because you must probably only have one or two. Going back to 89, usually I get this question about, you know, losing the French Open finally back in 89. That comes up all the time against Michael Chang. Yes, I can handle that one. But also the 1989 Wimbledon final against Boris, that was probably the toughest loss, because I just lost the French Open. And then you come to Wimbledon, uh, you get to the final, you lose another final, you know, two finals in a row in a Grand Slam. And, and, and the way I played, you know, I had a terrible start of that final, losing first at six slam. How good does that feel? <laughs> Got back in the match in the second set, but then it was all over in three sets. And I felt really disappointing the way I lost, the way I felt on the court. And, and obviously losing two Grand Slam finals within, within a month, uh, that took me pretty, pretty hard. 1988, I lost in the quarterfinals to uh, Miroslav Mechir, and I was really bummed out for about 48 hours until I realized that, whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Stefan is making the finals here, and we are from the same state. So I'm like, oh my God, he's <laughs> winning. So thank God Stefan won Wimbledon that year. So our state won all four, and more importantly, no one ever asked me about my loss. They called Stefan and asked him about his win. So it was the worst <laughs> yeah. defeat, but it only lasted for 48 hours and the uh, limelight went to Stefan. So thank you, Stefan. What is the best like Wimbledon match that you guys have seen? First one that comes into mind was uh, back in 1980 when I watched Borg Macron on television back in Sweden. At the time, it was an incredible fight. I think everybody agrees on that. Then going back to 2008, I think, that was another fabulous match. And last year, I watched Roger and Novak a crazy match. Oh, just crazy matches, yeah. I think for me that my favorite Wimbledon final it was 1976. Bjorn Boy beat Ili Nastase. Seriously, those are maybe the, the highest quality grass court matches that's ever been played. What about the, the WTA side, the women's game? What's, uh, what have been some of your favorite matchups at Wimbledon for them? Amelie Moresmo beating Justine Henna. That to me is the most emotional and dramatic because of what happened at the Australian Open the same year where Justin didn't really allow Amelie to win it uh, because of injury or whatever she pulled out. So I think that um, Amelie Moresma winning a proper major at Wimbledon, I think is my favorite. Well, I remember that Novotna final, it was very emotional, which I think everybody remembers. It was so such a pleasure to see her winning that year. But going back in the 90s, I think uh, Graf and Sanchez Vicario played a great final back in 95 or something. That was another good one, which you had all the drama and uh, it was so close. Who do you think is the best grass court player on the women's side and men's side of all time? I do think it brings out the best in Roger Federer because his decision making is so fast. So I think it's a natural, uh, a natural surface for Federer, and I love watching him on grass. I mean, there's nothing better. And on the women's side, I go with Navratilova, I think, because uh, incredible quality. Matt and Stefan, thanks again so much for doing this with us. Really appreciate your time. Thanks so much, like legends of our sport. Pleasure. Oh, thank you. My earliest Wimbledon memory was uh, going down to Wimbledon with a busload of other kids from our tennis club. We were five and six years old. There's probably about 30 kids all the way up to about 17 or 18. Got on centre court and saw Steffi Graf lose to Laurie McNeil. Yeah, getting to go on centre court was pretty uh, pretty impressive. Andy wasn't really interested, he just wanted to stand at, stand at a ranking and collect all the, the autographs. Well, my earliest memory in Wimbledon was, uh, I remember it was 2013, and it was my first year as a pro there. I, I watch every year on TV the tournament, and for me it's the most unbelievable club, the most unbelievable atmosphere. For me to be there and look at all the players, uh, all the players that I used to watch on the TV was unbelievable feeling. By popular demand, the social roundup is back on Tennis United. I can promise you that there are some dog videos, so you will yes. be pumped. The fans have requested it. We need to give the people what they want. We are going right into a dog yes. video.
with Perfect. Isla Tomlyanovic and Which her baby Cruz. <laughs> Ew! I so, just saw that. Oh my god! He like threw up like a whole like bucket load of water. He just gulped a bunch of seawater oh and threw my it all out. <laughs> They just wanted a cute family oh. video at the beach, and that's what they got. You gotta love dogs. Oh, poor Cruz. Here we have the cross tour WTA TP volley to volley. On the WTA side, we have two Wimbledon champions, Garbini Muguruza and her coach, Conchita Martinez. Both Wimbledon champions. Look at this. Stan going for the kill shot right there. And misses it with one of the all-time greatest players on grass, Serena Williams. Got the bling bodysuit going. Wow. Vashik, I would pay a lot of money to see you in this outfit. Oh, actually. I could rock it. Oh, I could Nick, rock it. Nick Kyrgios being hand-fed some balls from a sparring partner. Direct hit. Direct hit. Oh, so he just hit. Okay, so he just hit the, the guy that's throwing the... I think the best part of this, Got though, it. is if you can so hear he it, the volume's up. Listen to Nick <laughs> laugh. <laughs> so he just pranked him. And he hit him. Hit him with the ball. I mean, from like seven feet away, too. Come on. That's, and, he, that's and he clearly did it on purpose, too, for the... You know, it's like, that's that's the worst part about it. Actually, that's the best part about it. This is Gael. What's he, what's he up to? What's Gael up to here? He's always up to... He's always up to no good. Oh, I love this oh. is like tennis dodgeball. Okay, okay so, so this is this this is the spin the bottle version where we're, wherever the bottle is pointing, that's the person that grabs the racket and starts crushing balls at everyone else. This is cool. Are you gonna incorporate this game into your practices? Yeah, I, I need to know the context. I need to know what the what the reason for this game is, but I think it looks uh, it looks like fun. I'm in. I'm in. First of all, this starts out like one of those YouTube videos where you're like, no, something bad is about to happen. Oh, she did a flip. And then she lands she the did flip. A flip. She lands the flip. I was waiting for a blooper reel. I was expecting like the the, the, the rope to snap or like something <laughs> hilarious. And she lands a flip perfectly. Can we have a replay on the dog, please? Can we just zoom in on the dog for this one? Listen, a little game of rock, paper, scissors with Rafa right here. I feel like, oh my she's God, losing. Losing scissors. She, I mean, I mean, go go paper. Here we go. Yes. Finally. She's got it. You got you got to take your wins against Rafa when you can. Clearly, the Russians are bored. <laughs> 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 it looks like Karen just joined a group of random children at a park and started blowing bubbles and just yeah. thought it looked like fun. <laughs> yes. Like, I'll come exactly. <laughs> it's exactly what it looks like, Bethany. This is oh the God, reason she has won so strength. many three setters in her career. Notice how notice how she's holding the cake. There's not even and a not flinch. Eating it. Not even a flinch. Notice how she has the cupcakes in her hands and does not eat them. One That's in impressive. each hand, four more in front of her. I don't Incredible. know how she has this willpower. All right, Bethany, it's that time for us to choose the video of the week. What's your we favorite? Had good, we had some good social posts this week. I, we did. It was kind of a tough decision. You know, obviously, because I, I, you know I always choose the dog videos. I know. So I actually think we have the same one, but I like yes, dog This is the best one. First of all, this is hilarious. one of those videos that if you watch it 40 times, it just keeps getting funnier. Cruzy, you enjoying it? Oh, he's, I like he's oh. <laughs> You enjoying it, Cruzy? And just full on throws up. Love it. <laughs> the timing is great. <laughs> just watch it 35 more times. Social Roundup is back on Tennis United. So keep sending us your videos. To play in Wimbledon, it's always special. And the fact that I was able to win it uh, made it even more special. I was looking to the box, uh, which I always share the, the best moments and also the worst moments. <laughs> but this one was a special moment for everybody and I'm happy that uh, we celebrate it in a way together. After the final, it was very, very special for me. Being there, standing in front of the Royal Box, in uh, front of my team and her team and everything was just very, very special. I had uh, my family there, my parents, my brothers, and everybody supported me in the time. It's been unbelievable feeling. trivia here for you, Tim and Lindsay, but before we get into that, Tim, I hear you have a little trivia for us yourself. What do you got? Who was the first lady to serve overarm at Wimbledon? Oh my God. Wow. 
It was my great grandma. <laughs> oh, no, no way. way. Are you being cool. serious? I never know when what Tim year? is like being sarcastic no, or being serious. My great grandmother was the first lady to serve overarm, and my grandmother was the last lady to serve underarm. That's a pretty awesome fact. <laughs> stick, with, stick with me, you'll learn a lot. Okay, I, yeah. listen, I need to improve my tennis history. Now I know who I'm going to be chatting with. Well, uh, Lindsay, I'm sorry you're, you're, you're coming in a little bit of the underdog, but uh, well, I'll try and help you out as much as I can. <laughs> who was your final Wimbledon singles victory in 2008 against? Your last Wimbledon victory. No, it was on court two, and it was against a, a lefty. I remember that. But I don't know. Okay, give me multiple choice. I think Tim knows. <laughs> Tim knows. Tim knows. <laughs> you want me to give the score? <laughs> no way. <laughs> yes. Okay, so here's a multiple choice. It's Renata Vorikova, Julie Diddy, or Alexandra Wozniak. The first one. I'll give you that. One point. You got one point. Okay, here we go. What year did you make your Wimbledon singles debut? Do you want the choices? No, don't give him the choices. <laughs> I have... My singles main draw debut was... Yes. 1994. I lost to David Prinisil on court four. <laughs> How do you I know won that? The, I won the first <laughs> four. These are the children's questions. Let's go to the hard yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to forget my career, Tim. This is not good. Come on. Which team did you and Karina Morario beat in the 1999 Wimbledon's doubles final? I know I know it was Marion de Swart. I will say yes, you're correct with that one. She was also playing with a lefty that didn't have a ton of experience in Grand Slam finals. It was like Tar Tardikova? Tar yes! Yes! Elena Tartakova. Yes, yes. All right. I have a prediction that you will not get this one. Yes. But honestly, I will be so impressed if you do. It'll, it's a joke. How many career singles match wins do you have at Wimbledon? Oh, he knows oh. That. oh, I have to work it out. Otherwise, I'll get it wrong. It's probably four. <laughs> yeah. I think it's four. Are you gonna? Is that your guess, or you want to work it out? Well, how long have you got? Tim, you can work it out. I'll ask okay. Lindsay the next question. I'll give you a chance to work it out. So, Lindsay, back to you. All right, here's a question. What was the final set score of your 2005 Wimbledon final with Venus Williams? Well, it's either 9-7 or 10-8, and I think I'm going to go 9-7, 7-9. Boom, 9-7, there we go. Awesome. Tim, do you have your answer yet? You want me to slow down a little bit, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna go for the guess of 41. You underestimated yourself. 43. <laughs> <laughs> 43 wins. I, I don't know, but that, that to me, that puts Lindsay in the lead right now for this little quiz, so. Feels like it, feels like I'm, it. I'm, I'm, I'm just Kay. gonna say. I guess, uh, Tim, I'll ask you another question. Okay. Who was your first top 10 victory at Wimbledon against? Oh, yeah, no, it's Kafelnikov. Got it. <laughs> Got it, also impressive. Lindsay, I have one more question for you. This is potentially for the win, and I really think you should get this. <laughs> Which player have you not played mixed doubles with at Wimbledon? You ready? It's Todd Woodbridge, Brian McPhee, or Jan Michael Gamble? Gamble. Yep. I kind of would have been concerned if you if you didn't know this question. I only have one question left, and I mean, technically I have to ask it, but uh, I don't even know if Tim can win anymore because it's the last question. Name the other three uh, semi-finalists the first year you reached the semis in 1998. That's a good one. Oh. Well, Sam Press beat me. Who did he beat in the final? Uh, I mean, that's a good question. One of the lefty. Big lefty. Big lefty. It must be Goran. No. Goran. Yeah, it might have been Goran, yeah. Goran was one of them. So who did Goran beat in the other semi? Disappointing, Tim. Oh, no. <laughs> I was, I was too, self, 
I was too selfish. I wasn't interested in anyone else's match. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That's, that's a, a great answer. answer. Oh, I didn't wait. Were... No. <laughs> there was a huge battle if it rings any bells. Oh, it was 15-13. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, got it. Awesome. Well, Tim and Lindsay, thank you guys so much for coming on the show. It was awesome catching up with you. Thanks for sharing your memories, and hopefully we can talk to you again sometime on Tennis United. <laughs> Take care. My favorite Wimbledon moment ever would be very tough to choose from because there are so many good ones. It would have to be my match against Serena Williams on center court at Wimbledon because the crowd that day was just absolutely electric and still to this day, I've never played in front of a crowd that loud. It just gives me goosebumps thinking about it. My earliest memory in Wimbledon is uh, when I played uh, for the first time the main draw in 2013. Uh, the best moment was uh, last year when I could play uh, my best result in a Grand Slam, uh, playing the semi-final. All right, that's a wrap on the Wimbledon week. Vashik, another fun episode, but yes. I think I can guess what your favorite memory of Wimbledon is, <laughs> but I don't know, tell, tell me. Yeah, it would have to be probably winning the doubles in 2014. I would, I would have to put that as number one. You know what's funny is one of my biggest memories was actually as a junior as well. So I went, uh, to, I made it to the finals of Wimbledon, lost in the finals of girls doubles. That was the year even Isovich and Pat Rafter played the finals on Monday. No way. So I got a chance to go to that match. I was in the stadium for that match. That's so cool. And it was cool. the most amazing atmosphere. And that is probably one of my all-time favorite tennis memories, period. Well, this is all we have on Wimbledon this year is this show. So that's a wrap on Wimbledon week. And we will see you all next week for another episode. See you then.